What's up everyone out there? My name is Rudy and welcome to Children of a Dead Earth. Today we are going to be redesigning the gunship. Now the gunship isn't bad, it's fairly durable, it packs tons of firepower, but there are some things we can do to greatly improve it. We should do that because that is one of the hallmarks of this game after all, that the users, the players, should design ships that are interesting and effective. So the first thing we're going to look at are the nuclear reactors. They ha the gunship has two 60.4 megawatt thermoelectric fission reactors. I like the fact that there are two of them for the sake of redundancy. But we are going to be replacing these reactors with my own design. So let's delete both of these. And those reactors had required a total of 12 radiators. So let's add in our own reactor. I have a nice 150 megawatt thermoelectric fission reactor that I've used before in previous designs. This is the reactor we'll be using. I sort of managed to design this by aping my way through the design screen and also reading some tips on the forums. It's a 150 megawatt thermoelectric fission reactor. Just some things I would like to point out. The thermocouple is made out of tantalum and tungsten, two excellent materials for dealing with high heat environments. Also, the coolant I have used is sodium, both for the nuclear reactor and the outer coolant. Sodium is great because of the high melting point and specific heat and thermal conductivity, so it can take heat in quickly and also hold lots of it so we can bring it away. And thermocouple exit temperature, 2300 Kelvin. Now, having a high exit temperature is great because this is the heat that we're dumping directly into our radiators and radiators are much more efficient as you increase temperature. So we could decrease the exit temperature, increasing the power output of our power plant. See, we're up at 174, much greater efficiency, but this would require us to have larger, more surface area of radiators, which will consume more mass and also uh, more crew people. So we increase the exit temperature and that does make the reactor less efficient, but the mass that we save and the crew person usage that we save is much more valuable in this case. And these reactors will be providing more power than we need, I think. So I think um, I'm going to also have two reactors. I'm going to place them both sort of in the midship. That way they're separated, so hopefully both of them won't get taken out. It's very important to have redundancy after all. And these 150 megawatt thermoelectric fission reactors will provide us with more power than the original stock reactors. And also, these reactors are only 5 tons instead of, I think, 60 tons of the previous reactor design. Okay, so now we'll need to add some radiators to our reactors to dissipate their heat. I have a number of user-designed radiators made out of amorphous carbon. Now, the amorphous carbon radiator has a few advantages. Well, it has one main advantage, in the fact that it's lighter. It's a lighter material compared to silicon carbide. So I can throw in one of these 20 by 10 radiators that will dissipate 772 megawatts of energy. And I'm going to throw these radiators on the bottom of the ship. Now, what is the bottom of the ship, you say, because we are in space and there is no top or bottom? Well, I'm going to say that a rotation of 90 degrees is the bottom of the ship, simply because of the way things are oriented in the mod in the ship designer. And the reason why I'm going to do this is because the ship can rotate and shield the radiators from the enemy. Now, I'll only need three of these radiators to dissipate the heat from my reactors. And I'm going to sort of spread these radiators across the ship like so. Now another thing I'm going to do is I'm actually I think I will not put them quite at 90 degrees. I think I'll go for 70 degrees. Then I will duplicate these radiators as well. Now I have more radiators than I need but there's a good chance that some of them will get shot off during battle. And I'll put this at 110 degrees. So you can see we sort of have these two rows of radiators and they are spaced apart so that they are not interfering with each other. If I just take this radiator, duplicate it and put it at 110 degrees, we will 
suffer interreflection with another radiator, which is not good. It can decrease the efficiency of your radiators greatly. The reason why I'm orienting my radiators like this is because I've noticed that in battle the ships will rarely orient themselves so the radiators are faced directly away from the enemy. More often than not, once the weapons are in arc, the ship will stop ro rotating and a lot of the times the radiators will still be vulnerable and visible to enemy firepower. But by sort of orienting my radiators this way, uh, it's more likely that some of them will be shielded from the enemy. So we have a total of 6 20 by 10 amorphous carbon radiators, that gives us twice the radiator capacity we need for a reactor, so we can lose three of our radiators and still be perfectly fine. I'm going to delete these radiators for the lasers as well. I'm going to just delete all the other radiators. For now, I'm going to remove the 200 kilowatt flak missile launchers. I may put my own uh, kinetic kill device missile launchers on there at some point, but for now I'm just going to ignore having missiles. So for our weapons, we want to move all of our weapons towards, say, the front third of the ship and orient them all on the top. So, I mean, you can see how it makes sense to have asymmetrical ships because this top portion of the ship will be able to shield the bottom portion of the ship that contains all of our vital and critical radiator components. So first I'll start, I'll just move from the back of the ship to the front. We can take these sapphire violet lasers, very nice lasers, in fact, they've, uh, I've lost many a drone to the Titanium Sapphire Violet Laser. We can reduce the count down to 1, and let's set the rotation to 270 degrees. I'm not sure if my whole orientation scheme makes a whole hell of a lot of sense. I mean, why is 90 degrees the bottom of the ship? I don't know. But uh, it works for me. Same thing with the turreted coil guns. We have... 11 millimeter turreted railguns at 30 at 13 megawatts. And finally, a set of 39 megawatt turreted railguns. Four of them, in fact. So we'll bring those down to one and put them on the top. All right, that's looking much better. Let's uh, move all these weapons towards the front of the ship. I'm trying to keep as few vital components away from the rear of the ship and the engines in particular, because uh, the less firepower the enemy sends towards our engines, the better. Okay, so of course we want to take more weapons, I mean this ship can obviously hold more than one 39 megawatt uh, turret railgun, so let's uh, duplicate this module. I guess we, we can take four of them. And they don't need to be quite on top of the ship. We can angle them a bit and maybe put in two rows of weapons. So we'll increase the degrees by this one by 20. So that should be good. Let's see, I'll duplicate that one. Let's move it a bit. And let's duplicate this one and move it a bit. All right, that's looking pretty good. And we can actually delete these two that I put in the middle there. And I'm going to go through and do the same process with each other set of weapons. I guess another way you can think of it is it's like not the top of the ship, but it's maybe like a really prickly underbelly of a ship. And you know, like you expose it and there's like all these like, uh, like, I don't know, uh, quills come flying at you and just piercing you. I don't know. It's... Okay, the original design had two coil guns, so let's duplicate this coil gun. And the original design had two violet lasers, so let's duplicate this one as well. Alright, I think that should be pretty good. By having all of our weapons concentrated in one small portion of the ship, it'll be easier for us to bring them all to bear against the enemy, and also that leaves a very few components for the enemy to target towards the rear of our ship. We still need to add radiators for our sapphire violet lasers, so I'll be picking a one of my amorphous carbon radiators. Again, I'll go for the 51.5 megawatt radiator, and we'll need two of these.
All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's see, this is a radiator for the crew module. Let's actually delete that. We're going to be replacing the crew modules. So for example, our... Okay, so what I'm trying to say here is that we have 68 crew, and we have a total capacity of 90 crew, but we're only using 68. So what I'm going to do is take this size 40 crew module and replace it with my own size 20 crew module. So the size 25 crew module we can replace as well. And the crew module at the front is size 25. I'm going to replace it with a different size 20 crew module I have because it's uh, longer, giving the ship more of a sloped front. Okay, so we're going to need some more crew. Uh, we can take one of these and just duplicate it. And of course, the crew modules will also need radiators. We can... We have to dissipate 23. kilowatts of heat. I mean, all these people and all their heat that they're producing. Let's just use this uh, 34.8 kilowatt radiator. And we will, of course, throw this on the bottom of the ship as well. I'm not as worried about the radiators for the crew modules because they have a much lower profile and should be able to survive much more easily because of because of that. They're less likely to get picked off. Alright, things are looking pretty good. I think there's one more thing we need to do. These uh, one kilotane methane tanks could use some work. It's nice that we have a cluster of three tanks. Also, in the midship, we have a cluster of three 600 ton methane tanks, and at the front of the ship, we have one kiloton methane tanks. We can actually replace these tanks. I have designed my own armored 500 ton methane tank. The reason why I'm doing this is because I can take the 500 ton methane tank and duplicate it, so we end up with the same amount of fuel, but we have uh, more redundancy. We can lose some more tanks before we actually lose all of our fuel. I'm going to replace the 600 ton tanks also with my 500 ton tanks. So, I mean, I'm gonna have slightly less fuel than before, but I think the fact that overall the ship will be shorter, so we're going to save on armor. And I'll replace the front one kiloton methane tank as well. Nope, I keep hitting duplicate, but I mean to replace. So do the 500 ton tank and then duplicate it. Very, very nice. This ship is coming together greatly. We've managed to keep, I think, the main theme of the gunship. We have all the original weapons, we have the same propulsion system, but we've just sort of gutted and replaced a lot of the internal components. We've readjusted the weapons, we've changed our radiators, and we're using lighter and more efficient reactors. The final thing we'll want to do is take a look at the armor. Uh, currently we have 8 centimeters of reinforced carbon-carbon and a 5 millimeter aluminum Whipple shield. Now the reinforced carbon-carbon is very durable, however it is extremely expensive. If we replace this reinforced carbon carbon with boron, for instance, our ship will our ship cost has decreased drastically. We were, we were at 260 MC, now we're at 148 MC, and the boron is arguably even more durable than the reinforced carbon carbon. However, in the real world, boron is a very rare material, and the fact that it is so cheap in this game is a bit of a I don't know, maybe not quite realistic. So I'm not sure if it makes sense to use boron on this ship. However, it's been suggested that boron carbide is a reasonable and more realistic alternative, so I think I'm going to try that out. I've never used a boron carbide. Our cost is back up to 231 MC. It's still cheaper, and still lighter. Okay, so I'm going to take the aluminum Whipple shield. I'm actually going to make that a diamond Whipple shield. Brings us to 236 MC. And of course with the Whipple shield, making it too thick could be a problem. It needs to be just right. Between the diamond Whipple shield and the boron carbide, I'm going to add a layer of... I'm going to add a layer of either silica aerogel or graphite aerogel. I think at this point I'll go with whatever is least expensive. The graphite aerogel. Silica aerogel is 99.2 C per kilogram. Graphite aerogel is only 42C, so I go, I'll go with the graphite aerogel. We'll make that thickness 1 meter. 
All right, so we have two se one centimeter of diamond, 100 centimeters of graphite aerogel, and then eight centimeters of boron carbide. We can add another inner layer of spider silk. Hopefully it won't be too expensive. Let's make the thickness two centimeters. Oh, very, very nice, man. We come right in at 260 MC. Now, of course, if we replaced a boron carbide with just regular boron, our cost is ridiculously low. But I think for now, I will go with the boron carbide. And I think we are done with our gunship redesign. We need to test this out in the sandbox and see how it fares against, say, a stock gunship. Let's see, today, let's fight around... Let's see, let's go with an asteroid. We've been doing asteroids quite a bit. Let's fight around Juno. Let's make the enemy aggressive. We will be, of course, using our gunship Mark II. And the enemy craft will be a gunship. You know, I thought there was a feature for comparing two ships directly. Well, anyway, the, the stock gunship is 260 MC at 992 kilotons. Our gunship is also 260 MC at 10.5 kilotons, so we are a bit heavy. We have less Delta V, but our armor is perhaps uh, more durable and our ship is more efficiently designed. Let us see how we fare. Of course, the whole point of this exercise was to not have to be fighting gunships in the sandbox all the time. But hey, we need to fight a gunship to see how we did, I suppose. It's the baseline to test. So we're rotating towards the enemy. They're firing their 8mm railguns and we're firing our 8mm railguns. Alright, yeah, see, the ship isn't... Okay, yeah, our guns are using their turrets to orient towards the enemy. Our armor seems to be holding out fairly well. And we're firing our coil guns and the other rail guns. We destroyed an enemy coil gun. Oh, the enemy has three coil guns. I only put two coil guns on my ship. Maybe I should redo that. Our radiators are holding out pretty well. I don't think any of them have been taken out. And the enemies are no longer a threat. Enemy gunship has lost power generation. And we've lost both of our coil guns. So how did the... Uh, where is the enemy ship? Yeah, we've... <laughs> we've... <laughs> we've split them into multiple pieces. Yeah, I think... Uh, We've come up with a winner here. I think we've successfully redesigned the gunship. Look at that carnage. We've ripped holes in there, in their hull. And how did we do? So we've suffered some penetrations in our armor. Looks like we lost one of our 20 crew member crew modules. But both of our reactors are still intact. Both of our reactors are warm and happy. The crew isn't exactly safe, we lost 20 of them. We lost a significant amount of our fuel tanks. But thankfully we have our redundancy, which I will probably not stop talking about. Here comes another enemy gunship. But you can see how uh, you really can't control the rotation of your ship, at least not that I know of. So you can't guarantee that your radiators are going to be facing away from the enemy. So by putting, having these two multiple sets of radiators, I can, hopefully, some of them will be obscured by the ship and defended, and will unfortunately probably lose some other radiators. So the enemy is only able to fire two of their 8mm railguns at us, where we can fire all four. Also, we've taken out a number of their radiators, so they can't fire the weapons to full effect anymore. And here comes our complete railgun vomit, and we have the coil guns in there as well. Those are the green ones. So I think, uh... And they've been disarmed and lost power generation. Too easy! We just ripped, we just shredded their armor completely. And our boron carbide armor is held up fairly well. Of course, if we use boron, it would probably be even better. Yeah, we lost a... Yeah, this uh, midship crew module keeps getting destroyed. It's a death sentence if you uh, if you are assigned to a gunship and that's your crew module, you know you're probably not going to make it. My name is Rudy and this was Children of a Dead Earth. Hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.